Hello, everybody. Welcome to PyCon APAC 2022's Young Inspires event. My name is Wei Han. I'll be the host of this session. Today, we have a very special guest all the way from the Philippines. His name is Carl John Vinas. Uh, he's been one of the core organizers of the Programmers of Skilled. Um, he's also volunteering at the Python Philippines, and he's currently a university student. And we believe that uh, his story is going to inspire a lot of people, especially students at around his age. And he's going to share with, uh, share with us about his journey in programming, his journey in Python, and his journey in a lot of tech communities. So without further ado, let's welcome Carl John Vinas. Um, hello, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm, it's very great to be here. Hopefully, I guess um, I can help everybody get uh, gain a good experience or some notable stuff that they might want to hear about. So yeah, hopefully, I guess they can hear very good stories, um, quirky adventures, <laughs> on how I would term it. But yeah, uh, I guess I'm, I, all I can say is really, I'm really happy to be here. And yeah, hopefully, I can just give like a good story to everyone through this mm -hmm. experience. Nice. Uh, we're very excited to have you here, and we really appreciate that you uh, accepted our invitation. Can you sort of briefly introduce yourself a little bit more, uh, cover some of the parts that I probably didn't uh, talk about? Sure. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, I can just like, give like, a brief introduction of, it, of myself. But yeah, I'm Carl. So uh, I usually call myself as a stingy developer. So um, what I mean by that is uh, I'm the kind of developer that likes to uh, perform solutions, uh, good solutions, uh, like just through using very available open source tools. So that's my, um, I guess, good quirky stuff that I would love to do. So I just really just like love doing open source stuff. And it's just cool when you think about it that you can just like do projects for free. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I'm just like a university student studying computer science. Um, so you, you usually see, see me doing that. Um, but other than that, uh, if you're not, if I'm not in university stuff, I'll be working in geospatial projects. So that's my part-time work for now. So uh, at my, officially at the industry, I do geospatial based applications from crunching to um, the actual app itself. And when I'm not doing that, I'm just working on tech communities like the Programmers Guild in Python Philippines. And when I'm also not doing that, I usually just work on, yeah, I, I'm just going back to my quirky projects that are most of the time bad, but some of them are good. So, <laughs> and yeah, some of them are good social impact projects uh, when uh, and it initially started as a quirky project. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I love how you started with like, introducing you as someone who works on these quirky projects and then moved to, you know, other stuff like university <laughs> student, part-time developer in geospatial applications. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so it seems like uh, you've came a long way and the programming is such a big part of your life. You know, you're, you're doing uh, computer science studies, you're working part-time, you're working on all kinds of different projects, you're working on tech communities. Uh, so I'm kind of curious, uh, how did you get started with programming? How was your journey like that? Um, yeah, can you share with us about it? Uh, sure. Um, well, initially, uh, I started learning programming already before I got into university. So I, I, I at least like have a very small uh, knowledge from there. Uh, but funny enough, uh, I actually my language wasn't really Python, the initial, my first language, it was actually C, uh, since it was actually being taught at my previous school at that time. And it was, I guess, in some ways more difficult, since I was not really like familiar with programming. And I was like, just very arduous journey for me and it really was not that i guess great at the start since i really did not have like a good idea on how i can use c in like real world stuff like it's mostly in the low level languages type of stuff but yeah after that i tried exploring like i i thought to myself maybe it's not me <laughs> maybe it's not, maybe it's not the language maybe it's me so i tried exploring other languages and that's where i came into python and wow it really just astounded me how simple it was so what i loved about it at that time was it was so simple to get started into a project and the syntax in itself is very simple so it really was not that hard for me to learn it and yeah after that i just started working on so many stuff so easily that 
I was just so fascinated about it. But yeah, I do know that underneath it like it's very um complex and somewhat confusing the package management behind it. But yeah, other than that, it's actually very fun that I can just like type a few commands and get started on my new project. And that's how it really helped me learn programming faster than my initial experience. So yeah, if I were to travel back in time, I guess I would tell myself to or my previous self is to stop using C and just like use Python right now, <laughs> since that would increase my proficiency faster than I initially started. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I I heard you you know talking about how how simple it is to 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 learn Python, and I was reading about the projects that you've built, and I could sort of quickly figure out that. Uh, a lot of these projects, uh, they're really based around, you know, using Python, you're able to build projects that are for other people who is not professional programmers who don't know how to program. And also it's, it's very easy for uh, people in other fields to, to, to learn it. And I absolutely love that facet about Python. So um, I'm kind of curious, can, can you share with us about some of the projects that you've built? Because I thought those are very interesting. Uh, it sort of impacted a lot of um, other people's lives. Can you share with us? Um, sure, I would love to share about my projects. So actually, one of my first projects was what I call, uh, I guess, a simple Python filter. <laughs> so it's really just like, a, I guess, how you would imagine pandas. So at that time, as a student, that's actually my first Python project. I don't have an, I really didn't have an idea that pandas existed. So like I initially builded small projects for myself uh, and I used that actually, that simple Python data filter for the purpose of trying to investigate people's thoughts on regards to the like COVID at that time. I, that was like a, last year ago. So those are, this, that's actually one of my most um, first Python project or the most recent one where it's actually a bigger one. Um, but the more simple ones uh, or one of the actually first, first um, Python project that I started was le really just like a simple script where I can actually analyze um, what was the summary of a previous message that I read. So that was the initial project that I worked on. It was like a very simple thing where you can just like takes random words from a snippet of words. So that was the initial thing that I wanted to do. I, I think it was for, for assignment or something. So those are some of the more useful ones that I did. Um, and some of the more quirky and horrible ones was, let's give one more example of that, was I made like a small a Valentine's card generator for Valentine's at that time. So yeah, like, so aside from quirky projects, I was also working on random projects in relation to valentine so at that time we have like a small event at our school celebrating valentines um and i think one of the uh, other organizations in our university had like a request where uh, comsci students or students that are familiar with programming should make projects in relation to programming for valentines so of course like the initial thoughts was of course make uh like a small program or a project for your loved one, yeah? Like that will be the initial thing to do in Valentine's. But at that time, I really didn't have like a Valentine's to begin with. So, so what I decided was um, uh, to make like a Valentine's card generator for people's Valentine's at that time. So for their loved ones, like they can make their own ones. Uh, but the twist that I added that was a, a bit fight unrelated, aside from the actual card generator, was the face AI that I initially modified. So there was an initial, the initial purpose of that AI was to generate images based on words. So after you type a word, the AI tried to guess what image that was and tried to combine an abstract painting with the painting that the AI generated. So what I did was, <clears throat> so I took the AI for merging the abstract painting to from that uh, two AIs, and I use only the abstract AI generating thing to merge it from another code that I made, where it takes a face of your loved one and tries to convert it into a sketch and merge that into two, which resulted in like a abstract painting of your loved one and attach that to the card generator or to the card itself. So it looked good. Like in a way you can generate <laughs> Valentine's cards for your loved ones with a modified um, abstract painting of their face. And it was somewhat cool. 
Um, but yeah, um, I think everybody was like really just laughing about the reality that um, because I didn't have a Valentine's, I made like a Valentine's guitar generator for everyone's Valentine's. And it's a bit sad now that I think about it, but it was a quirky project at that time. But yeah, so that's usually the theme of my projects. It's usually just either useful or just quirky or sad. So, <laughs> so that, yeah, like that's the usual theme for it. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Um, uh, yeah, actually, I, I've seen some of the some of uh, pictures that you generated with that a AI Valentine's card generator. That those are actually very legit. Um, that's uh, a lot about the the projects that you've built. The other part of the things that you've been working on a lot is the communities. So you are um, sort of one of the founders of the Programmers Guild, and you, you've been a core organizer. Uh, ever since. Can you tell us a little bit more about this organization? How did this uh, organiz organization come along? Uh, what's the story behind it? Uh, sure. Um, I guess if I were to talk about the story, I think I need to go back a bit on the projects part. So actually the organizations or how I was able to participate in these organizations and make the programmer skill actually started from a Python project, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess it initially started when like uh, but as I, talk, I was talking about a bit later, was just a small Python script that I did. So because I showed that to some people, like I guess I was a bit of a child back then. Like I, I really just wanted to show how some of my simple things work. So like I was so astound astounded by the ability of like a Python programming language being able to analyze a lot of text and get like um, some words in these a uh, paragraph. So I showed it to people and. They were talking about how maybe it would be good if we expound the audience, have more people talk about the Programmers Guild. And yeah, it, it just started from there. And we started wanting to make like an organization about programming. And then like people from university started suggesting that we should join university competitions. And that's when we thought of like building an organization which um, surrounds about making talking about programming or competitive programming. So that's how it initially started. It really was just from a very random Python project. And then after that, I started developing the Programmers Guild together with the other co-founders. And yeah, it was just like a huge organization about different um, programming related stuff and competitive programming or simple competitions in relation to programming. So we joined competitions, we did some small Python related activities, we did some small programming related or general programming related activities. And one of these events was the recent one was actually called uh, Rekindle. So the con or Reconnect Rekindle, I think was the full name. But the concept was just about how we would love to make it so that stu different students or different professionals can see how programming is such or how programming can be from different related fields and from different passions. So like for the first day, we so showcase how programming can be used in cybersecurity, in, in research, in data science. And it was really just a way for us to showcase that you can rekindle your passion from programming and like programming in itself helps you rekindle your passion, whatever it is, even if it's a bit unrelated to programming. Since I think that's the idea that I want to tell uh, when we made the event where we can make it so that programming supports your passion in a way. And another event where we organized was actually was a collaboration with Fight on Philippines. And I think that's where we started connecting at that time. Since at the time, our organization wanted to showcase our event or showcase programming in a bigger audience. So we thought to ourselves to how we can interconnect or share with more people different experiences. So at that time, since um, um, Python was something we were a bit interested in, and um, we had like a limited idea on how big Python is. So that's the time that we decided to collaborate with Philippines. And they were very kind enough to uh, provide speakers for us at that time. And they were talking about Python-related stuff. So the first day, we were talking about how Python can be simply 
how to get started in Python. And then in the following days, we talked about its more specialized fields like, like web development and other stuff. And at the final day, I think we were just talking about how cool tech communities are. And look at me now. <laughs> I'm about to talk about something like that as well. So yeah, it, it really just started from different ideas, collaborating and yeah, that's how we started the Python, or how it started from a small Python project to an organization that talks about programming and competitions, and to now making different events in relation to programming. So, and yeah, it just started from an initial thought of one thing to expound Python to a bigger audience. And yeah, that's how we met Python Philippines, and now I'm volunteering at my spare time in Python Philippines, yeah. That's very really awesome. Yeah, uh, I, it's, it's really amazing how uh, you're organizing these events and sort of bridge the students at, at universities uh, to you know, br bridge people from people who are not knowing how to program to actually know how to program and also from students to the real world. That's really amazing. Uh, you talked about uh, Python Philippines. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what was it like to be a volunteer at Python Philippines and, and what you do there? Uh, sure. Um, so, yeah, I, actually, I just got started into being a volunteer. So I think for the last three years of, or for the last three years previously, um, I was actually just mo mostly working on the programmers guild. So yeah, and that's where we made the two events. We competed in different competitions. But I guess recently, the most work that I did as a volunteer was to be as a host in one of their latest events called Work From Home Pythonista. And yeah, oh my god, uh, the resurgence. Um, but yeah, it, uh, that was one of the things that I did as a volunteer. So I was an host for their latest episode. So for context, Work From Home Pythonista is simply just an event or a series of webinars where we talked about how different or how Pythonistas do their work from home setup or what they usually do on their homes uh, as they work. Um, and yeah, I, I just find it very so that's why I got like an awe moment <laughs> um, was uh, I remembered like a previous episode um, in that um, event. Uh, I think it was uh, the second episode or something where they talked about how a data scientist can also be working at the North Pole uh, or at the North Pole. So, and I just, I was just like astounded how big Python can really be used in almost any context. So, yeah, like the idea of a data scientist working at the North Pole and using like some Python related libraries there. And it just made me remember again that we have like code in the North Pole <laughs> setting um, for storage or for future purposes. And yeah, and I guess for my hosting experience, um, uh, what I in, uh, what I was a host for that episode was another engineer where he talks more about the different experiences that he had and the work from home setup that he, he did. And yeah, it was an interesting experience since at the time, I was able to expound better my horizons and better understand how diverse people can be in using Python. And yeah, that gave me the idea that almost anyone can use Python. And that's amazing. Like, even if you're just a simple person, well, or like, even if you're just a, not a, a non-coder or not even using Python for like bigger things in work, you can use Python for like some of the stuff that they're working on or just for simple automation. So like for me, I used Python for quirky projects on random ideas that I thought of, like transforming your face into an abstract painting, I guess. And like, I know some people as well that aside from using it from, or the more uncommon ones where they use it at the North Pole, some of the more common ones where they can automate them at their homes, or just making simple hardware projects that you're interested in. So I'm really uh, amazed by how you can use Python in just like literally everything, or you can almost use it in generally everything. So that's why it's called a general purpose language. And yeah, that helps me a lot since you can just like use Python literally if you wanted to. So yeah, that's very cool in my experience. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I love that facet about Python, and, and I love that this, this is something that is invaluable about this uh, these tech communities. It's it's where you meet all these people who are using some something that you also use to build something that you don't expect to be uh, to use it to be to be building. Uh, how did your life sort of change after participating in these tech communities? Were, were there anything significantly different? before you participate in these uh, communities and after? And what, what sort of fascinates you about these communities? Because you, you, you spend so much time on it. Um, yeah, what, what fascinates you uh, about it? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I would love to share about that. Um, tech communities in itself was, I guess, something that I would have told my previous self or when I was getting started. Since I think the biggest thing that helped me get started in Python was the idea of being able to use it in almost anything or being able to use it simply in anything and being able to get started at it very simply. So, yeah, like because of tech communities, it was the, it was the stimuli or the opportunity for me to understand how diverse backgrounds in it and how helpful it really was so at the time when i was beginning i really was had like a limited idea of what programming can do but through tech communities like i was able to learn that you can use it in very diverse backgrounds and that helped really me a lot <clears throat> so that helped me a lot and another thing that tech communities helped me a lot was the idea of it being in good supporting groups so i think that's um a normal thing in reality, I guess, where, of course, when you're working with fellow people or uh, with people with fellow mindsets, it also helps us develop more uh, as a person. So, yeah, if I were to go back again in time, what I would told myself was I think he would have should have joined a tech community since that would have allowed me to better understand and gain a better background of different things. And Another good thing about it was you can just like simply ask a person on existing difficulties that you have. So one of the more challenges that I uh, was getting started was the diversity of the packages and the um, skill sets that you need. So if I knew or I just asked from a tech community person that pandas existed, I wouldn't have to build like my own simple Python filter. So yeah, like just having people um available for asking like simple questions on how you could get started or what good libraries that you could use is already good in itself and having at least people uh, with similar mindsets allows for further collaboration and more projects and the ideas so also through fight on philippines i was able to gain a better idea of possible projects and like that i can do and find people that I can collaborate with. So that's how I would tell my past self that just join a tech community since the benefits really out, uh, outweighs the cons in itself. So yeah, like that's how much it really changed me as a person. Like it helped me communicate more. It helped me have better opportunities. And yeah, I think that's roughly it for me. Yeah, for about tech communities anyways. Nice. Yeah, that that's that's a lot about uh, tech communities. Uh, thank you for sharing about that. Uh, so, aside from the tech communities, uh, what are some of the other advices that you would give to uh, students who are similar at your age? Well, maybe some some advices that are related to tech communities as well. But yeah, what are some of the advices that you would give to students who are around your age who maybe just got started with programming, maybe just got started with Python, maybe? you know, haven't gone to any of these tech community events and have pretty limited knowledge about programming, just got started. Uh, what what advices would you give to them? Work on very <laughs> quirky projects. Um, so I guess what I mean by that is what really helped for me as a person, well, I don't know if it will work for everyone, but problems in itself are formed by, or you can see the relevance on something or try to learn a better skill if you can find the relevance in it. So for me, um, I was able to learn programming more was just because I was able to find it useful 
in not really just for a industry context or when I'm working. I find it really cool that I can really just use it for any problem that I interact with. So though I haven't actually done this, <laughs> but some of my problems in the past was actually finding um, better ways to record um, meeting sessions. So let's go with that example. So at university, um, like I have like three to five classes and like there's a lot of things to note. And there are some times that I need like a recording of the video session. Um, but an issue that I always gain or I always get into context is how um, I can't really record completely everything. So I can read, like, for example, what if my camera shuts down or what if my laptop shuts down? So that's a problem that I had, like, as I go into university and I need, like, a recording of most stuff. And another issue that arises is the diversity of platforms that most of my professors are using. So some use Zoom, some use Google Meets, and some use whatever. So, and OBS in itself can do most of this stuff or like any video recording software. But a problem that I encountered was how can I re record these sessions easily when like, for example, if my laptop went out or something. So an initial idea that I had was really just like have like another separate machine to record it. But I wanted to configure it in a way where it can automate sessions or just find good snippets of the recording in itself. So those were the ideas that arise from me. Like it's just simple problems in day-to-day -day lives, lives. And knowing that you can solve this through programming is how it really just motivates me to work on it. So yeah, like I guess that's the roughly the advice. Just work on different projects that are different problems that you're interested in and try to find a way where you can use programming in it. So yeah, and I guess that's how I build as well the other projects that I did. So I guess that's another example. I had like an issue where at my time or after the COVID, one of our greatest issues was identifying how people felt in regards to the COVID situation or identifying what they need at that time. So actually, for context, um, I guess this is a good thing as a flashback as well or as an example. Um, but at the COVID situation, uh, there was a time where we had like stranded students in their dorms. So uh, there are some students in dormitories that were stranded in the um COVID-19 situation since since it was a bit sudden as well in the Philippines so a major issue in that time was most of the students were actually trapped in their dorms and cannot buy the needed necessities so one of the most I guess memorable thing that I did was this problem in itself so of course you would thought it's a very huge problem so I used programming at that time and a bit of data analysis to gain or to like understand from paragraphs of their statements so like we pass like a small form for it that day and we analyzed in that paragraphs what they truly need and their sentiments or emotions at that time so we were able to better identify what they would need what their emotions was in regards to the covid situation better identify what they truly need and i guess for context at that time I think there was roughly 20,000 students. <laughs> so yeah, I think you would still need like a bit of programming in that spec. Just find a problem that you're genuinely interested in and try to find a way that you can use programming. And I think that really helped me at the most. So yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. You know, working on projects that you actually really care about, it, either it's useful or it's quirky. <laughs> Uh, as long as you, it's something that you really care about and, or you really love and you try to build it. And from that process, you, you, in order to conquer your problem, you sort of learn the tools uh, in order to conquer that problem. And that just improves how you, how you program. Um, that, that's definitely a great advice. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I think um, that is it for our interview. Um, Thank you for sharing with us about um, all, the, all of the things that you're working on. Um, yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us. Um, is there any final words that you want to say to the audience? Um, 
I hope everybody works on a lot of quirky projects. <laughs> and I guess let me just give us a very small reminder that hopefully I guess somewhat extends with the audience is how I think we just need to remember that Python can be used for almost anything and it's for any audience. And join a tech community if you have one or build your own since I think that would be a good thing as well. If you don't have one, just build a tech community on your own. It might be a bit simple. And yeah, just have a lot of fun in it. Um, programming in itself can be fun if you're working on quirky projects or things you just want to work on. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think that's me for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, join, join PyCon APAC 2022. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing with us. Well, uh, we are very grateful to have you here. Thank you so much for your time. I think that will be it. Cool. Thank you as well. I'm very glad to be here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.